All right, more now on the summary that was released today by the Attorney General on the report from Special Counsel Robert Mueller. Joining us with analysis is Attorney David Katz. Uh, he has a long roster of his uh, resume, but uh, former Assistant District Attorney and Federal Prosecutor. Hi, David. Thanks for joining us. Uh, what's your, what do you glean from this four-page summary from the Attorney General that's been sent now to the uh, Judiciary Committee? Well, I'm a criminal defense attorney now myself. I represent people who are in federal criminal peril like President Trump was. And so I congratulate his lawyers for being able to give the president some good news today. It hasn't been two years of very good news. It may be another year and a half of bad news once the House starts investigating more. But it was good news today. Um, the news was that while Russia did um, interfere in our election, that much is clear, that uh, the president and his staff did not collude with them. So that's good news. But David, As what do you make about uh, Mueller not exonerating the president on obstruction of justice and sort of leaving that up to the attorney general? Well, I'm getting to that right now that uh, the uh, Mueller said that there was no um, exoneration, that he could not exonerate the president for obstruction of justice. That's left up to, um, I guess that was left up to Barr and Rosenstein now, what's mysterious to me is why, instead of just releasing the report on that and letting the facts speak for themselves, you know, President Trump said, read the whole report. That's what the Democrats in the House want, read the whole report. So I think we should stop pussyfooting around and having these dribs and drabs that seem to be in the president's favor and let the nation read the report. I think very little of it is executive privilege. I think very little of it is grand jury secrecy. That can be resolved by simply getting an order that it's in the public interest and having the judge release it to the public. But correct me if I'm wrong, it is the government who has the uh, burden of proof here. If there was any evidence to suggest that there was probable cause for obstruction of justice, then Mueller should have said that. Mueller actually has the standard of proof beyond a reasonable doubt. I was a federal prosecutor and a prosecutor is not supposed to indict any case that he or she doesn't think can be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. And I think that's what saved Donald Trump Jr. in this situation. There's been an awful lot of speculation about that Trump Tower meeting, uh, the one with the Russians who said they had dirt on Hillary Clinton. But could they actually prove that case beyond a reasonable doubt, given that the meeting itself ended up being kind of a bust, although it was supposed to be. But the special uh, counsel uh, says the special counsel views as, quote, difficult issues of law and fact. That, what's the burden of proof there? Is that beyond a reasonable doubt? They're all beyond a reasonable doubt, but the obstruction but the, but of justice is a difficult issue. Remember, the president did fire Comey. He also pressured Sessions out. So the Is that illegal or is that executive power? Well, the uh, president has the power to dismiss an FBI director and has the power to force out his attorney general. But if it's done with a bad and corrupt purpose, that is to attempt to obstruct justice, um, it could still be a violation of the law. But I think what's gonna happen now is the House is gonna take a look at this. Anybody who really wants vindication, that's gonna come from the House. If the House Democrats say there's no basis to proceed with this or with emoluments or with obstruction of justice or with the campaign violations, that will resonate with people. The cynics will say this was all a bunch of Republicans. At the end of the day, Mueller's a Republican, Barr's a Republican, Rosenstein's a Republican, and the, uh, the Republicans who are crowing in the House and Congress, they're all Republicans. Let's see what the Democrats do with their power of subpoena now that they're in control after the blue wave of the House since... Uh, 2000 and uh, what was it, uh, 18. The, the president spoke today, uh, leaving Mar-a-Lago and heading back to D.C. In fact, we just had some video. He is just now landing uh, at Andrews Air Force Base. But he said that this began as an illegal takedown, uh, which then backfired. What do you make of that? Well, I don't think that that's so. As I say, Mueller was a very well-respected uh, person. He's a lifelong Republican. Rosenstein's another lifelong Republican. And after the president fired Comey, and then bragged, remember on NBC that I finally got rid of that, uh, uh, that person because I was getting a lot of pressure on the Russia probe. And then the president also crowed to the Russians at the Oval Office uh, when they all came in there, all those, uh, all those Russian uh, diplomats and uh, spies or whatever they were. Remember the president was crowing with them about having gotten rid of that nut job Comey. I mean, the country had to do something. We had to restore faith in our democracy. So. Mueller uh, was, was brought in by Rosenstein, and 
You know, I, in my view, you know, prosecutors have to be courageous. They have to be wise, but also courageous. And I think that Mueller was very overcautious. Uh, now let's see what the House does. They have the power of subpoena. Uh, let's see if they can get to the bottom of these things. Remember, Manafort not only didn't talk, he obstructed the investigation a federal judge found, even once he was supposed to be cooperating. You have Cohn out there who's making revelations. We don't know what exactly General Flynn's really going to say. Gates is still a mystery. Yeah, this is certainly not the end, and we're going to see what the Southern District does with their investigations as it pertains to the Trump inaugural committee, as it pertains to Trump organization. Of course, we'll see much of that. Uh, we were just well. seeing uh, the Joint Base Andrews arrival of uh, President Trump's uh, plane there, Air Force One, landing from Mar-a-Lago into Maryland, and then he'll be taking his motorcade here back to the White House. David Katz, thank you for joining us. Again, these are live pictures from Joint Base Andrews as the president arrives. Uh,